Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Peace Loving Guns. My name is Will and today we're taking a look at the Glorifier Elite Gun Cleaning Kit. This was sent to me free of charge by the nice folks at Glorifier. Um, a gentleman by the name of Micah Chin contacted me on my Facebook group, Peace Loving Guns. Make sure to check us out. Links will be in the doobly doo below. And um, they sent me this kit to review and test out. It's in this nice soft bag. I have to say that uh, that's that's a novel concept. I think Otis Gun Cleaning Kits have been uh, doing this for a while now. Uh, I rather like that all, everything that you buy nowadays comes with this hard plastic box and then you just wind up with a bunch of hard plastic boxes everywhere. So um, I think that the soft case is, is kind of a nice touch. Otis is made in the US. Uh, these guys are not, um, but it's gun cleaning brushes. So. Um, I'm not sure how much intellectual property uh, can be claimed as being stolen there uh, as far as that is concerned. And then as well, I mean, the, the pull-through wire um, snake kind of designs, those have been around for a long time as well, going back to like cannons and stuff like that. So here we have the Glorifier Elite Gun Cleaning Kit. We're going to go ahead and take it out of its packaging. This is how it came in a nice cardboard box from Amazon. I'm just pull that sheath off of there. Um, there's your Glorifier Elite Gun and Cleaning Kit information. It says it cleans all rifles, pistols, shotguns, muzzle loaders, and it's professional grade quality, lightweight, portable, and complete. I hope it's complete. Everything should be in there, right? Uh, and then it also shows you everything that comes with bronze brushes, um, cotton swabs, jags, uh, all kinds of different little picks. Uh, T-handle and all that kind of stuff. Um, so there's a couple points that I'm going to be looking for with this kit to determine kind of um, how awesome I think it is. Is after a good solid uh, harsh cleaning, um, how do the bristles look on the brush that I use? Um, because cheaper in brushes, the bristles will bend um, and uh, not last very long. Um, also, are they made of the proper material, uh, i.e. do they seem to scratch the gun? Um, that's important. And then you have uh, the T-handle is always a source of uh, a weak point in these designs where the T-handle will break and then you don't have anything to provide leverage for when you want to scrub out a bore or whatnot. Um, and we'll just take a general look at the quality. No review where anybody gets something for free is going to be um, completely free of biases. So we just put that out there automatically. I'm not going to put something on my channel if um, it's trash and try to tell you it's awesome and you should go buy it. Um, I do this as a service to you guys um, so that we can provide uh, some quality content. Um, they provide this stuff to me so that I can have some content for my channel. Um, obviously it's free advertising for them it gets me a free gun cleaning kit and um, it gets you a little bit of perspective on whether or not you should spend your hard-earned American pesos um, on a company. Uh, like this. Um, so just right out in front, these are an overseas manufacturer. Um, so if that bothers you, there are uh, gun cleaning kit manufacturers that make stuff here in the States. Um, if that is your prerogative, please do support them. Um, if not, if you want to save a couple bucks, um, these kits can be had on Amazon for the price currently stated. Typically, that's a little bit cheaper than you can get the name brand stuff for you know, US made stuff. But um, here we go. Let's take a look at the Glorifier Elite Gunning Cleaning Kit. So it comes in this baggie and uh, we're just gonna set that down. Um, for this kind of uh, open form review, I'm going to clean my FNS nine millimeter handgun. And um, as with all gun YouTube videos, we wanna make sure that we're doing everything in a safe manner. And the safest that I can be in my personal home is to start with a loaded gun. So I have a loaded gun here because guns should be loaded or they can't do you any good. And I'm gonna remove the magazine. There's that source of ammunition. That's uh, 17 rounds of nine millimeter jacketed hollow point Winchester D defend. Um, kind of like the old Talon rounds, the black Talons or the uh, Winchester Supreme lawmen and uh, that stuff. So we've removed the source of ammunition and there goes the 
uh, other bullet there. We're just going to get rid of all of the ammunition by ye yeeting it across the room. Excellent. So now we can check visually and physically. And I have a clear, open, unobstructed bore, no, no ammunition, no source of ammunition in the gun, nothing floating around on the table here for me to get into trouble with. So here we have a open and clear FNS 9mm uh, rock and a TLR 8, and we're going to give this just a little bit of a clean job. So let's take a look. So here is our kit, and um, just go ahead and open her up like a book. Nice soft bag, seems it's got some padding to it, and everything kind of just flops out there. Okay, so this is uh, this is kind of what we're looking at here. We've got a number of lengths of the steel cable. Uh, they are covered in a uh, plastic sheath and they are threaded on one side uh, female and threaded on the other side male. Uh, you got one for a spot for patches and whatnot to pull through. They're sending a nice kind of terry cloth uh, wipe here. It almost feels like it's a, uh, a lens cloth. It's that kind of um, softness. This one's a bit finer. Um, another, another cloth. You just kind of see the size relative there. There is a thank you note from Glorifier for purchasing this. Thank you, Glorifier, for sending this. Here's our T-handle. It does rotate about the central um, axis. Uh, it has a poly uh, handle there and um, thread it on the inside to accept so that you can get at whatever you're trying to get at. Chamber flag. Um, some folks really like to use those. Another T-handle. Oh, okay. So this is actually kind of a nice touch. So it actually comes with this little quasi lipstick container and it's actually a uh, brush. Um, so you can brush off your optics. Uh, so that's kind of a neat touch. Other T-handle, your, your muzzle obstruction, muzzle flag, which doesn't fit in a pistol apparently. Looks like they've given us a healthy supply of these circular pads, large uh, two inch ish pads, the one inch pads. Connect with us to receive free gun cleaning solvent. Please search Glorifier on Facebook or by email. Who doesn't want more Hops 9 and some Hops lubricating oil? If you find that parts are missing or damaged, just reach out to the service team at Glorifier and they will um, hopefully do what they say they're going to do. Actually, I've had them uh, replace a headset that I got from them, and uh, they were very prompt to replace it. Got this kind of uh, capsule style holder for the brushes. That's kind of nice. Um, it'll keep uh, solvent or stuff that's uh, in small quantities on the bristles from getting on all over the other stuff. Um, kind of a nice big nylon brush. This is interesting. So this is a pick and it is a flathead screwdriver on both sides. Um, probably just like a flat pick. There might be a more technical name for this, um, but it's metal construction and it may be brass. I can double check that, um, but it feels really good. It looks pretty cool too has a good weight. Uh, we have a um, bronze brush, nylon or uh, polycarbonate with the metal bristles, and then what is almost certainly a steel brush. All of these are the same footprint, which is kind of cool. You have guns with various um, metallurgies and whatnot, or accessories. You want to use the appropriate bristles for the job. So here you have nylon, steel, and the bronze. I'll just put this back inside its case. Rather like that. Here we have a little package with all of our picks. Some nice little spear point picks. Boop. Do this off to the side so you boop. 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 There's another one that has a flathead kind of screwdriver tip on it. There's another. 
another. And this is kind of a square uh, in profile, the tip there. I do notice that there is a little bit of um, mold flashing on the edges of these picks, which you might just hit with a razor blade to get some of that off of there. Perhaps I'm not as impressed with the plastic picks in here. I'm gonna finish on the molding. Let's see if we can get all of them in this tube. Let's see, maybe they're too long, who knows, okay. It would appear that they are too long. So this tube is awesome. It fits all of them in there, but lengthwise, no. So I think that's a little bit of a missed opportunity. If these were just an inch shorter, they would all fit inside this uh, capsule, which that would be kind of cool. Capsule is still kind of cool, but if it could fit all the picks, that would be really cool. The case itself has this kind of uh, velveteen sort of feel to it. And it's got a big pocket right there. And uh, that stuff can just set down in there. And then we have all of our brushes. And I'll just go ahead and rattle these off here. Uh, 243, 270, 30 cal, 35, 38, 40, 45, 50, 410, 28 gauge, 20 gauge, 16 gauge, 12 gauge, sorry, 10 gauges, no 10 gauge. There is a 22556 uh, bore and chamber brush here. This is an awesome addition here, um, very thorough. Uh, this isn't uh, just your standard uh, FUD gun cleaning kit, you know, in the wooden box, which gets most of the job done. They're thinking about <laughs> the people that have Murica's weapon, which is the AR-15. So you have the brush that you want to be able to easily do that. And of course, you've got uh, not only do you have your brushes, but you've got your swabs down at the bottom. In addition to kind of the Otis style of um, pull-through uh, steel cables, you've got standard rods. It looks like you've got a number of coated, probably steel by the weight. Let's see. Yeah, so this guy here is ostensibly brass, and this is... This is smaller, so I'm going to go ahead on a limb here and say this is a steel rod that's smaller, and this is brass, and it's bigger, and this one feels lighter. So you've got one brass rod and then several coated steel rods, um, and I'll annotate if I determine that that's false information there. They come in another kind of velveteen kind of case Keep them together. Put that all in there, and it comes with a plastic case. All your plastic case goodness. We open this baby up and then there are all of your jags. There is a threaded nylon um, brush for putting on your T-handle. That's a very cool thought there and a number of adapter pieces. All in all so far this kit looks like it is very well thought out. Super cool and this is interesting. So if you've never seen what good jags look like, I've seen crappy jags before. These jags are very pointy and uh, that helps with doing jaggy things with them. Then there are our um, patch uh, holders. So let's go ahead and get out what we think we're going to need. How about a... that would be the T-handle for doing your rifle cleaning and such. Here's a rotational T-handle here and we are going to clean this gun. So what I would like is the metallic brush, this T-handle. This is kind of a finer point. There's no way to close this kind of bigger compartment. It just kind of sits down there like that. We can cinch these rods up and put an overhand, single overhand knot in there. Close this baby up. And then unlike what I did at the beginning of the movie here, when we open this, we just have to understand that that it opens like a book like that and you don't want to tip everything out and then everything will be laid out right there let's see if we shake it yeah so I mean the stuff has enough mass that it's gonna kind of spill everywhere if you shake it vigorously we have a cleared handgun I'm gonna drop the slide Function test. Ah yes, the FNS 9mm. A gun that I truly appreciate. 
here we go. We're going to lock the slide to the rear. We're going to flip the disassembly lever down. We're going to let the slide ride forward. And then we are going to pull the trigger and let it slide off. Now we have our gun in two parts. I'm going to free the main spring, recoil spring there. Remove our barrel and slide. And for all intents and purposes of this review, I'm just going to be doing a brief breakdown and cleaning of the gun, field strip if you will, and um, look down inside there. We're going to get this nice and clean. Everybody has their choice of lubricants and solvents to clean their guns. Uh, some people use WD-40, which is atrocious. Um, some people like to use Ballastol or Hops Number 9. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff. I'm just going to show you what I use. I actually have been supported by the gun cleaners for a long time. Uh, since I began my channel, they were the first people that uh, responded to any of my communications. And uh, they are XLE owned and uh, LE and military supporters. Um, awesome guys, uh, guncleaners.com, check them out. They do have a proprietary lubricant and solvent. They restore guns, rinse them, or give them a gun bath, hypersonic cleaning, um, do hand finishing, and make your gun look good as new. Their Dirty Boar box is uh, $24.97. It's on sale right now. Normally it's like 30 bucks, and it's a great value for what it is. It's right up there with what you would expect to pay for hops and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it comes with a nylon brush, a terry cloth, a big old honkin' bottle of their solvent, and then a smaller bottle of the lube. I've been using it for years now. Uh, they've supported the channel for some time. Uh, check out the playlist here for explosions as they've supported us with uh, a lot of Tannerite and or SureShot uh, binary explosive compound. Uh, and uh, we've done some fun videos that don't get enough watch time because YouTube is YouTube. So I'm going to start by taking the FNS9 and we're going to use a little bit of our gun cleaners brand, the solvent. And we are going to just spritz some down into the workings of the gun here. We're going to spritz some onto the inner workings of the slide. Yep. I'm going to put some down into the bore and onto the barrel and locking lug surface. And I'm going to put some on the recoil spring as well. A good part of any gun cleaning kit is Q-tips. So make sure you put some Q-tips down inside your gun cleaning kit. And then nice Scott shop towels. These are very robust and I like using them for a lot of different things. They're better than regular paper towels. So we got some of the solvent on this barrel. I'm just going to give that a wipe down. The solvent doesn't uh, smell crazy. I've smelled plenty of solvents before that will burn your eyes. I'm doing this inside uh, and it isn't bothering me. Uh, up close right here, it does have kind of a Windexy sort of smell. It's rather not bothersome. And here we are with a clean barrel assembly. The solvent will evaporate, so that's good because you don't want solvent intermingling with your lubricant. Let's go ahead and get some of that on the breech face there. And we're going to go ahead and use, not the nylon brush that comes with that, we're going to use this nice heavy duty brass brush that comes with the Glory Fire kit. Just get all of those surfaces, even though it doesn't look like they are dirty, we're gonna get them anyway. All the locking surfaces, the feed ramp, which has already been polished to a nice mirror shine. And let's go ahead and dry her off with a shop towel. Nice and clean and nice and dry. So there's our barrel. I'd say that that's darn near good. Let's go ahead and get some of that solvent off. I'm just trying to pick up the big chunks of dirt and debris lubricant that may have flown off in the course of using the gun get it off of the working surfaces 
I can still see down in there. There's little bits of speckles of stuff. I'm not trying to be religious about this. Gun maintenance to me is one of those things that doesn't have to be spotless. It just has to have clean working surfaces when you do it. My guns uh, admittedly go quite a long time without without cleaning, so sue me. I get off any of the overspray there. All right, so now we've just wiped off the excess solvent uh, with some of the bigger stuff. I'm gonna give it another spritz. And now I'm gonna get at it with the brush. Getting that excess off gives us kind of a fighting chance to really get in there and do some work. Nice clean rails. I already took some uh, really fine grit sandpaper to the contact surfaces and polished them just a little bit. This gun has never malfunctioned except when I put it inside of mud and smacked it with a Glock trenching tool and kind of smacked mud into it. Um, that Gray Fox Ranch mud uh, is super debilitating towards guns. We haven't found a gun that will take more than, uh, be able to fire more than two shots uh, with the Gray Fox Ranch mud caked all over it and smacked into it. So we're looking for that gun that'll beat that record of two shots and go to three shots or one that will actually work uh, without being completely taken down by mud. I'm gonna put a little bit of this solvent just on this one spot here on this towel and clean off that. Get inside these rails right there. Make sure that when I lift up my slide lock, there's no gunk underneath the slide lock. Same thing with the safeties. Make sure my rear rails are good. Undersides of the rails. And that's a clean looking lower. All right, let's wipe off some of the big stuff. And guys, I'm using one paper towel. Push down our safety plunger and kind of get at that. Try and get inside those rails the best we can. If not, that's what we got Q-tips for. I'm just trying to get the big stuff right now. But here we go. Um, got the big stuff out. Just gonna give it a couple spritzes and um, take our metallic brush and get inside those rails. Get inside the slide there. And I'm really putting pressure on this guy so that I can test to see how this brush is doing. You are gonna have bristles on the edge that, that pop down like that. What I'm looking for is massive deformation of the thick, um, sections of bristle. I've used cheap brushes before that after one use, they're just mashed to all heck. That's kind of what I'm looking for there. Get that breech face. Go ahead and do some more of this rinsing solvent. Let's go ahead and give her a wipe. So far what I see, the brush, um, you are looking at some deformation on the outside edges of the bristles. That's to be expected. Uh, I'm pushing on it very hard and uh, hitting it up against the edge, um, you know, kind of ramming it into like a, a right angle, if you would. And I'm not seeing any kind of real hard deformation there. Um, the little edge pieces, you can kind of bend back down. That is their bronze brush. And let's see if we can't get some of this solvent out of there remove the debris that we scrubbed loose the debris my fingers are going numb get inside those rails and i hate cleaning guns i'll admit i let my guns go too long without cleaning them it's very important for me when i go to use tools that they work when i want them to work uh, especially when it's been a while and if i need to clean my gun it's because i probably really need to clean my gun Clean out inside the back sight there. Wipe down the surface of the sight serrations. We're just gonna give it more spritz on that chamber face. It's getting difficult to work because my hand's going numb. So that's a relatively clean and dry slide assembly. We have the recoil spring, which we haven't messed with yet. Get this so that it's loosely packed and then squeeze it really tight over the recoil spring assembly. And just like a screw, I'm gonna twist it so that those kind of folds press into the recoil spring and get the excess solvent off and all the gunk that it's helped to loosen up. 
and that's quite a bit cleaner than it was. And I'm gonna push down on the spring here and just kind of get at its rail that it travels on. So I can get in there with the Q-tip, with the edge of the Q-tip, and I'm just gonna pull that through like a screw. And this is just gonna help pull that any last little bit of gunk that's stuck to it. You can see I'm just twisting it like it's a bolt. Keep going the right way. All right, and it just pulled off all that gunk there. And we can do that one more time. What do you think? So I just wrap that around and I'm just twisting it. And this will work for any of your flat recoil springs like this. Works really good on the flat ones because there's a nice bearing surface that pushes up against that Q-tip. Will work to some degree on your uh, round wire springs. And uh, there's a nice dry recoil spring. Now I'm not going to put any lube on that because the recoil spring doesn't need any lube. It's just extra lube for dirt to get stuck to. So we're not going to mess with that. I am going to get at the bore with um, with the bore brush. So let's go ahead and get our nine millimeter bore brush. So a nine millimeter bore brush is your 38 caliber brush. Gonna just not put it onto that one. It's not meant for that. There we go. So you gotta use the right T-handle. There are a couple different thread pitches there. Use our 38 caliber brush. Let's go ahead and put some more solvent down the barrel. Yep, that's all over the place, so that's good. That's what we want. And then we're just going to go from go from breech to muzzle. And then I'm gonna do that again. I could be doing this with the pull-through wires. Um, those work pretty well. Work good in the field too. I'm just gonna push it straight through. And I'm just doing this the first couple times. If there's anything big in there, then I want that to come out onto my vintage Gander Mountain gunsmithing mat. Don't be jealous that I have that, y'all. And now I'm just going to give the bore a nice little scrubbing. All right, that's that. And then we'll go ahead and take off our brush, which after a nice scrubbing, looks like that. Using the right brush always helps for the job. So the brush seems to be in good order still. Let's get our 38 caliber swab. Put that on there and let's just leave the bore nice and dry. Oh yeah. So there is a nice clean and dry bore. If you can see that. And just to make sure those rails are clean, getting in them with a Q-tip. Same thing with the rails on the slide. See if I can get down in there. Just a little bit. They're better than they were. Lubricant. You don't need to lube your barrel, but it can't hurt to have a thin film of lubricant over your metallic surfaces. So I'm just gonna give one spritz into the bore and on the breech face and wipe down any excess. So the lube actually has kind of a sweet smell. If you've ever smelled hops number nine, it doesn't smell exactly like that, but um, I've heard jokes about guys putting a drop of hops number nine behind their ear and for, to drive the girls crazy, um, like they like it. I've also heard of girls that uh, will murder you if you spray that in your house. Um, if I was uh, cohabitating with somebody, I probably wouldn't spray this right in the living room, but it doesn't have an unpleasant smell. It's not gonna give me a headache or anything like that. Rather nice, I would say. And I'm just going to use a spritz on the towel and wipe down the surface of the barrel so there's just a very thin, thin film of lubricant on it. And then we're gonna do the same thing on breech face. Now guys tend to over lubricate their guns. Don't be a guy that over lubricates his gun. You don't need to do that. Less is more. I'm gonna do one spritz on the inside of the frame. Oops, there you go. Spray it all over your hands. Wiped into the frame. Make sure we've got a thin, a thin film on our bearing surfaces in there. And then the most important part here is getting some inside your rails, because those are the bearing surfaces. So I sprayed just a little bit on the corner there, and I'm going to give that a wipe on the tops of the rails. 
on the little ramp there, the top of the other rail, and then inside on the sides of the rails. Same thing with our block in the back, our cruciform sear there, safety plunger, and we've got a thin film across all of the bearing surfaces on the lower. And then on the upper, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna fold myself a nice little corner here. I'm gonna spritz just a little bit into that corner. And we're gonna go along the inside edge of the rail, along the bearing surface, the top of the slide here, on the safety block, and the bearing surfaces that bear on the rear components of the slide there, sear, etc striker face and just put just a thin film all right and then so we're ready to put the barrel back into the slide i'm going to put our spring back in to the upper assembly and then slide this back on cycle the action a few times function test cycle And we're good to go there. That is a nice clean and dry FNS9. Thank you very much for watching. That just about covers it for the Glory Fire Elite Gun Cleaning Kit. Again, just to summarize, I like that it comes in a soft bag. It's a very complete, concise kit. I'll put the price down in the doobly-doo below, just kind of showing what it is currently at the time of publishing this video. But you've got just a a vast assortment of brushes, swabs, as well as jags. You got three separate T-handles, your pull-through cables, and then of course uh, some patches and some nice effects like you've got uh, kind of that nice case holding all of the brushes and an AR-15 bore and chamber brush. Uh, so just a, a, pretty, a pretty great assortment of gun cleaning supplies for all your gun cleaning needs. It's a pretty consistent case. Hopefully this helps you to make some sort of purchasing decision. You know, I don't have one gun of every brush and blah, 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 but I think this just kind of gives a general overview of kind of what's in the kit and um, the general quality. Uh, and now that we're uh, done with that, we want to thank uh, Glory Fire, Micah Chin, uh, for sending this out to me. We appreciate the support that it gives the channel. It gives us a little bit of content uh, to give to you guys. A lot of you guys are going to be looking for product on Amazon anyway, and this just kind of gives a as unbiased as possible opinion on this sort of stuff uh, before you make that purchasing decision because you're probably going to see it anyway. So we want to thank the guys at Glorify for being willing to take a chance on small YouTube creators like Peace, Love & Guns. And then as well, uh, we want to thank the Gun Cleaners for hooking us up with some of their lube and solvent. Uh, they've been longtime supporters of the channel, and uh, they're great guys. Again, they support military and law enforcement, and uh, they're great believers in the Constitution. Check them out if you have any questions on that. Their stuff is also really uh, top-notch as well. Only one thing left to do, guys. Let's uh, go ahead and get the gun and gas it up, because a clean gun is an accurate gun, but it doesn't do any good if you ain't got it loaded. So let's load it up and... Uh, it's uh, ready to go. Thanks a lot for watching. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, and all of those wonderful things. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one.